alive. Hey, I'm glad that we saw. I'm, I'm glad that we saw uh, when I see you off air, um, because because we would have got hit with a copyright. Because like, <laughs> y'all didn't have to tear my song down like that. Y'all y'all did not have to tear my song down like because me and Josh was getting it. You know what I mean? Chris I might not have indulged us. Chris might not have indulged us on that one. But me and Josh was tearing that song up. Okay? Oh, I was the DJ. I was the DJ. She she was she was gonna uh she was gonna read the the title of the video. I mean, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't think, one, of her, one of her friends probably would have sent it to her. Like, listen, I, I don't know what they what her friends call her. I don't know if they call her like Tasia, Tay, whatever. Like, girl, they really tell your song up. Like, you got to come back in the booth. These boys trying to show you up. Hey, hey, trying to show you up. You know what I mean? Hey. We we you know we do what we can, but we ain't gonna we ain't gonna show her up like the uh, like the Miami Dolphins showed the Broncos up because that was nasty insane. work. That was insane, insane. Hey, bro, you know how I many people was mad about that game? Like, bro, it was people like Bronco fans. I didn't know they had a fan base so heavy and deep over that. Oof. It's football. Uh, Every football team got a fan yeah, base. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Imagine. Like imagine. That. Imagine your team getting beat by fifty and like having to go in to work. Mm. Like especially I mean, if you live in a rival city, like a, a Broncos fan in Miami that had to go into work this week on Monday. Mm. Hey, don't I say nothing to me. Don't say nothing to me. I ain't gonna lie. Lie. I don't let sports get into way of my pay. I ain't gonna lie. I would have I would have got to work and been like, uh, it is what it is, bro. It's a game. <laughs> hey, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. You lived in Boston. If you survived them fans, you could make it hey. anywhere. Exactly. Hello, hello, <laughs> uh, you know. What they what they like putting jerseys on your desk and all that at, in Boston? What was it? What Bruh, did they put? It was so at my job. They knew I was a, a Steelers fan. At one of the years, the Patriots played the Steelers. So because I was one of the plant leaders, everybody in the plant wore a Patriots. Like every like everybody wore a Patriots shirt that day, the, the Friday before the game. And then they put down uh, Patriots stuff on. They decorated my door with Patriots stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's crazy work. That's crazy. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Hey, 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 don't 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 play. But honestly, that's not that bad though. That's not that bad because it was it was one shorty that like she a teacher and she a AKA and they like decorated her stuff with a bunch of Delta stuff and I was like, hey, too far, too far. Like one of y'all children go get stolen on like with Nona Ryder messing around out there. But let's let's get into our Mount Rushmore draft because you know. All three of us, we like to think that we're fairly fit guys. You know, we're trying to get more in shape. You know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. if you if you watch our our uh, our Instagram stories or, and all that good stuff, you'll see us in the gym fairly often. And we talk about sports on this show, so why not combine the two and talk about the best big athletes? And I mean, the the hefty, the big fellas and big gals of the sports world. Let's talk about it. Let's let's go. In the draft, we gonna go in order the draft from youngest to oldest. So, Chris, you gonna start off? Josh, when's your birthday? Uh, June twenty fifth. And you, yeah, we're the same age. Same right? year, right? Yep, yeah, same so, year. So yeah, you're you're the second uh, youngest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go last. We so we gonna okay. go Chris, Josh, and then me. And we do a Mount Rushmore, so four picks a piece. Go ahead, Chris. Who's the, who's the number one pick? Who's the top pick in the inaugural big? At big baller draft. There we go. Big baller draft. <laughs> Let me get my boy Miguel Cabrera. We just talked about this off air. We just talked about the fact that he started. Yeah. He can't, well, we gonna he, let it, he, we gonna let it rock. I mean, I'll tell you. That. Give me, give me Big Poppy. Give me Big Poppy. Okay, Big Poppy. That's a great pick. That's a great pick. That's a solid right. pick right there. That's a solid pick. It's a solid pick. Josh, who you got? Uh, with my first pick, I don't know if we went over it. Um, but you know what? He he got no rings, but he an all time great player. Give me Charles Barkley. Brown mound to rebound. I like it. I, like I mean, he he kind of yeah too. he kind of is almost yeah yeah he almost so so that. he he started off in shape for regular people's standards, but for NBA players, he always been fat. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm gonna go with. I'm surprised that Chris didn't go with him, seeing as the shirt that he's wearing right now, and this is a fellow Detroiter as well. 
Give me my man, the bus, Jerome Bettis, baby. <laughs> I was going to save him to the second Need round. Need, no, that's the number one pick. I was going to save him to the second round. Okay, play around. Man, play I, around I, I was going to save him too, but I mean, it's all good. G Gibbs, what I mean? You got back-to-back -back picks? We doing a snake draft? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess we can do a snake draft. All right, all right. So, my second round pick after Jerome Bettis, you know, I thought about this long and hard, and and um, it's, it's it's been tough. I couldn't pass on him, though. You know, I'm not a huge wrestling guy, but I kind of can't pass on Andre the Giant. Can't pass. Can't pass. Okay. That's a, that's a guaranteed hit of a of a what all time greats. Give me Andre the Giant. My next pick was going to be wrestling, too, and I think this is a sleeper pick because he you can, he never necessarily been fat, but he been chubby our entire lives, and I feel like he one of the few chubby wrestlers that still get respect from everybody. Give me Mick Foley. Hey, that's a great one. That's a great one right there. I, I love that one. I, I honestly love that pick right there. That's that's great pick. Great pick. Man, that's that's cute, bro. I'm sticking with baseball, man. I'm sticking with baseball. Give me my boy CC Sabathia, man. I got one of the best hey, hitters cool. ever. One of the best start pitchers ever, man. I, I'm cool with that. Okay, that's cool. That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, I got to return to the gridiron. No, wait, is it Chris got another pick, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the two pick. Chris. Chris. Yeah, okay. Got I got another Go pick. Ahead. So my next pick. Uh I think I'm gonna go with my man's that play for the Texans, bro. I can't think of his name, bro. But Vince Wilfork. He used to get a lot of sacks. What's his name, bro? I'm thinking Vince Wilford. That's all I could think of. Patriots and Texans. Who else did he play for outside the Texans? I think he did play. Yeah, I think it is Vince. I'm going to grab Vince. Hey, grab you a dirty That's dog. Him. I literally, that was going to be my fourth <laughs> round pick because I just knew nobody was going to get what? Vince. All right, so for, for my third round pick, I'm going to go ahead and get some baseball in there. He not the, the, the greatest of players. He was up and down a lot, but he played for Detroit. Go ahead, give me Prince Fielder. Yeah. Ah, give me Prince Fielder. That, that, that was my last one. That's a good one. That's a good one. See, I wanted either Prince or his pop Cecil, but then I thought about it. I'm like, Cecil wasn't really he, – he wasn't like that it, like Prince was. Like, he just wasn't in that in – that He had the same person. longevity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the longevity, but it just didn't feel like he was there. So, now I got to go with a White Sox guy because, ill. I hate this for me. Uh, give me Frank the Tank Thomas, man. Come on, come on, Frank Thomas. That's that's who we gonna rock out okay. right here. We gonna go with Frank Thomas as my uh, third round pick. And um, to close out this draft for me, you know, late rounder. Hey, you got to compete. You know what I mean? Like, we want you to make this team. We want you to show up and 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 do good things for us. But if you can't, we'll be all right. Stephanie Dawson out of the WNBA. We, you know, oh, that's good. That's good. Her, her her Twitter name is not Big Mama Steph for no reason. She's a baller. She did a thing. She's still doing her thing now. You know, that, that is my Mount Rushmore of, of big athletes. But my last pick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go on a limb here. This dude, he's not the most prolific in his sports, but at the same time, he's an icon and all of us watched him growing up. I'm going Butterbean. Hey, hey, that's how kid go. That's how kid go. Cause like, while he may not have been the best athlete, he was like wildly entertaining when he was rolling. Wildly entertaining. All right, what you got? What you we got? We closing it out with Chris. I can't believe we all missed this man. Come on down, Zion Williamson. Come on down, Zion Williamson. <laughs> Come on down, baby. Come on down. Hey, hey, Chris. I can't believe you. You better relax. You better, because now Mariah Mills is going to be coming for you. You know, but she just started. The words are started, baby. As soon as I get started, ain't no stopping, okay? Let me, let me get Zion Williamson, baby. Let me oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hey, the big fella is, you know, and, and and he's one of those like technically you could say he started in shape, but that was like six months. That was literally like right. Six bro, months. He, you, no, you, you, bro, as soon as he got guy. drafted, bro. As soon as he got drafted, he was like, nah, bro. He got to lose some weight. Like as soon as he got drafted, yeah, yeah. No, he needed to lose weight for health reasons, not because he was big. Now it's like, bro, what happened? Like, what is you on? You darn near Sean Kemp status. What's happening here? <laughs> this is crazy. 
<laughs> but if we're talking about bloated, we got to talk about the bloated win that the Dolphins took over <laughs> the the Broncos, one of the largest margins of victory in NFL history, second most points of all time, all of the embarrassment there, and we've got so much more than that. I mean, when I tell you we've got a great show today, we've got a blowout by uh, by Oregon, which we're going to discuss in terms of what does this mean for Prime's legacy, what does this mean for Prime in general. we got to talk week three standouts, and we're coming at you with our latest segment, Rebuild or Reload. Which teams need to blow it up, and which teams just need to grow together a little bit. We're going to talk about all that and more on today's episode of Facts Over Acts. Fellas, y'all ready? I'm ready yes, for sir. it. All righty, well, let's get into it. What's up, y'all? Have a seat. It's your favorite hour of the week with the Facts Over Acts crew. We got the master, the mix master, Josh Guyton in the building. That is I. We got the money man, the magic player, Chris Allen in the building. Right here, right here. And then you got the little old MC. That's me, Kenton Gibbs. Now, fellas, please tell me this. 70 to 20. Second mm. most points scored in an NFL game. And, and let's just be honest. They had 70 with like a good amount of time left. It was eight Mike minutes McDaniels, left. Mike McDaniels took his foot way off the gas. Yeah. Mike White was in the game. Okay. That that's how bad this thing got. And Mike White got a passing touchdown. Throwing touchdowns to in the year of our Lord and Savior 2023, Robbie Chosen, also known, formerly known as Robbie Anderson. Yep. Fellas, y'all tell me. What do you think about this performance? What are your initial thoughts and reactions to this performance? Um, so my I, I, my initial reaction is one shout out to the Dolphins because the Dolphins have that explosive high powered offense Absolutely. that a lot of people thought they that they would have going into the season. Shout out to to Tua. Um, this is our first time seeing him fully healthy for I feel like this is the longest he's been healthy his entire career thus far. So we see that he's buying into the system, uh, buying into that playbook. Shout out to the offensive coordinator for switching it up that much. I don't know if that's something that we see Miami doing coming weeks going against a team that, like, you know, they take serious. But those trick plays that they were running were amazingly drawn up, perfectly executed. Um, Tua has a lot of weapons. Tyreek Hill was by far the fastest receiver in the NFL uh Mostert is in my opinion the fastest running back in the NFL so you're able to do those kind of things but if you were Denver where do you go from here because you already invested so much in this project if you're Denver I mean you invested in Russell Wilson you gave what 18 dollars for Sean Payton to turn it around and this is not something that you can say you we just got to retool and go back out there if you lose by 50 if you allow somebody to score 70 points in the modern nfl you have to blow up that entire team and start over yeah there there is no way you can take any of these pieces or take this personnel or take or take this regiment and say you know if we just retool we can get it together Absolutely. So my initial reaction is the Broncos, you you got to blow it up. We've seen some bad NFL teams in our lifetime, but we've never seen a team give up 700 offensive yards. And that's not me exaggerating. That's literally something that's never happened in the history of this sport. Yeah. 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 That's, that's tough. That's tough. Chris, what you thinking? What's your initial reaction to this game? I, I'm not even going to hold y'all boys up, man. I'm not even going to hold y'all boys up. Tua going to do it. That's my slogan since the first game, bro. <laughs> I'm all in on the Dolphins winning their conference. I'm all in on the Dolphins getting to the championship game of their conference. I'm all in for the Dolphins going to the Super Bowl if they stay healthy, right? Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's look at the details here, right? Scoring 70 in a football game, to me, is equivalent to these things I'm about to say. Equivalent to a hat trick in soccer. Yeah, It's equivalent to a team winning 67 wins in Basketball, 67 or more wins in basketball. I think it's more rare than that. I, it's equivalent to a baseball team winning more than 105 games. It's equivalent to a team going 15 and 1 in the playoffs to me. Se this hasn't been done since 1966. And that's not even it, Gibbs. That's not even it, Gibbs. By the way, pause real quick. Shout out to my boy Gibbs. He's on ESPN, everybody. ACC Network. 
Shout out Gibbs. Yeah, he did Shout his thing. Gibbs. You had to tap in to be there. But hey. What I'm saying, Gibbs, what I'm saying, Gibbs, is what they did is something that we might not see for another fifty years. Right? Yeah. This is something that we not we might not see for our lifetime. Right? And mm-hmm. guess what, Gibbs? Waddle was not on the field. Mm-mm-mm. Their second option was not on the field. And another thing, Tyreek Hill didn't he get the ball thrown to him after the second quarter. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Oh, Do you God. understand what I'm saying when I say that? <laughs> yeah, I hear you, brother. We hear, I hear you. you. I, I hear you. 70 points. I don't even know how many first downs they got, but it, it's probably a zillion. You know, you know, I, I have, I, I'm going I'm to step in here. I, I have one thought on this game, and this is, this is really going to hurt some folks' feelings. This, this game was worse than what everybody thought it was. Way worse. Way worse for a multitude of reasons. Number one, Mike McDaniels intentionally stopped scoring at 70. He stopped. He really was like, all right, that's enough. Yep. That's enough. They could have hit a field goal and set the record. Not only that, not only that, you took out your starters when the record was within reach. Well, well before the record was within reach. But you could have put him back in and said, Tua, go get me a touchdown. Yep. I need hey. I need to to go ahead and, and get that that done. <laughs> Somebody but, in the chat says Sierra filing papers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Let me let me let y'all in on the seat, okay? It's the year of our Lord and Savior, 2023. Women, men, non-binary folks, everybody heal like Wolverine when your bank account is right, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and say what you want about Russell Wilson. He got that check. He got that baggerton. You understand me? But let me keep going into why this is worse than we thought. As a matter of fact, let's go to the Russell Wilson point. Let's go to the Sean Payton point. Do y'all know between those two, I'm going to let y'all guess how many first and second round picks combined were traded for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson combined. It was at least three first round picks for Russell Wilson. At least three. Not first round, but three picks. Combine them go five. Mm-hmm. You think they traded five first round picks or five picks overall? I'm gonna go five first rounders. Okay. Chris, what you got? I got I got I got five. I got six. I got six. I know they did three for him and they did two for Peyton. Okay, so in total, they traded three first-round picks and two second-round picks and a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick for Sean Payton and um, and Russell Wilson. Not to mention, they traded Drew Locke, up-and-coming tight end, Noah Fett, and defensive lineman Shelby Harris. Now, mm. here's the thing about that that blows my mind. Josh, and, and this is the other part of what makes it worse. We're going to talk about this later. The other teams that we're going to talk about for rebuild or reload, they all have something of value to trade. This team is in hell right now because they have no money. They're right up against it in terms of cap. And yeah. they have no asset. All the, their trades is going. They couldn't. Even if they said, we're going to strip this thing down to the studs and start over. What are you getting for Russell Wilson in, in, the, in 2023? Very seriously, what are you getting? And, and you know, <clears throat> to be honest, Gibbs, you're not getting nothing. But, but you know something? At the time they gave Russell that money, it made sense. But here, it made but, sense. And, yeah. this is why I say, and this is why I say it's worse than this. The only tradable asset they have that I think has a lot of value, Patrick Sertan Jr. That's it. Uh, I would say Sutton to an offense. I would say okay, so. I, I'll throw in shortly. Uh, Sutton, what do you think they get back for both of them combined? I say maybe a team that's desperate. <laughs> I say maybe a team that's desperate gives you a first and that's it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't even say a for first. Sutan, say, for uh, Sutan, uh, I say two, two in a piece, two in a small piece. I say for hmm. both of them combined, you'll get one because I think Cortland Sutton, he's a little bit too injury prone to have yep. that that idea of like, oh, we can count on him as a receiver number one. He's not a wide receiver number one, if we're being honest. He's not for a, they, both they players, I give you a first and a future second. That If I'm a GM, I'm I'm looking at that as a good, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's I'll say that because yeah. you don't need Sutton to be a number one on your team. That's a solid two. 
But that's but that's my point. They have nothing to trade. If they even if they traded those two out, so what you just did was you gave up two of your best players who were supposed to be big parts of the future going forward, and now you're still stuck with what? Russell Wilson, who's what, 33, 34 now, and he's declining rapidly. Yeah. Sean Payton, who, hey, for as snarly and as upset as he is, he came in with the, you know, Nathaniel Hackett put on one of the worst coaching performances I've ever seen in the NFL. My brother in Christ, look within. <laughs> look within. The, you know what that, you, as the old folks say, the same thing make you laugh, make you cry. Because you was laughing real hard at Nathaniel. Now look at you. The ha-ha's and he-he's flowing in your direction, huh, brother? Okay. So, you know, this is, it's a it's a sad situation, but it's much worse than the fans realize it to be because this is a team that, what do you have to rebuild with even if you wanted to go rebuild? You're just stuck. You're stuck in nothingness. Yep. That's, ugh. Ah, 0-3 off a 50-point loss. Brother, you're, you're done. You're toast. You're cooked. Now, when we talk about uh, when we talk about that loss and everything that came up off it, we also got to talk about another loss that happened to a Colorado team this week. Boy, this was a terrible week for Colorado. I mean, bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Boulder's thirty minutes from Denver too. It's That's thirty minutes part. away. Thirty That's minutes crazy. away. That's crazy. That whole that disease spreading. That disease is spreading in Colorado. Let me tell you something, okay? They they said Broncos country denied, bus country denied. Y'all are not getting no love out here. But with that being said, Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks whooped the absolute wheels off of Colorado this weekend. You know, obviously, you look at this game and you say to yourself. How much stock should we put into it and all that good stuff? But the reality is, this is a game that saw a a pretty a team pretty much look superior and put hands on the opponent, forty two to six. Fellas, what are y'all thoughts coming out of this game? Um, so I'm, oh, go 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 ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just cut in here because it's on my mind. When you look at what Colorado has, right, versus what mm-hmm. Oregon has, right, you can tell why one school is a higher upper echelon school than the other, right? The biggest thing that I noticed is the size on the lines, right? The size on those lines. Most, most, most bigger, most schools that of that magnitude, they're going to have the big bodies and they're going to get the recruits for the size on that lines. And Dion even said he a couple pieces away from having a team that he won't, right? Yep. But Colorado hasn't really had a farm system for live. So, I don't really know how you fix that. And if you fast forward to the later game that day, Notre Dame and Ohio State, right? Does it look like Colorado will be in the same stratosphere as those teams? Because Oregon is technically ranked higher than Notre Dame right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, because of the size of the lines, both lines, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. until they close that gap, I think Colorado is what it is. It's a high-power offense when you're playing against a mediocre or you no know, subpar team. But if you play against one of these big power schools, it's kind of useless because you can't you can't block anybody, you can't defend anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right, so Josh, what you thinking, man? Talk to me. Um, I'm thinking that what was supposed to happen actually happened. Let's not forget that that Coach Prime got these kids playing uh, at a level that not a lot of people expected. Nobody expected them to start the season three and zero. They playing against a team that a lot of people consider to be a championship contender in, in, in FBS. And that's what's supposed to happen. But it's a couple things here. One, Shadour Sanders has been sacked 22 times so far this season. Through four games, that's the most that somebody has been sacked in the history of college football. The the amount of sacks that Colorado's defensive line has is the least out of all of college football this season. And I'm not talking about Division I schools. I'm not talking about their conference. I'm talking about if you're talking about uh, uh, Mid-Tennessee State Tech A&M, that team has more sacks than Colorado has right now. And the reason is you taking over a team to where, yes, you brought in some pieces. Yes, you brought in your kids. But at the same time, this is a pro- anybody 
How, how many of us was fans of NCAA football? And we used to run it on a 360. How many times you say, I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to take over this trash two-star program and try to. What happened those first two, three seasons you got that team? You got to wait till those bums graduate until you go. I'm, I'm not calling those kids on Colorado bums. But at the same time, they're playing above their level. And Oregon is a team that's been working on this program for at least the last decade. Yeah. And another point that I want to make is uh, Dan Lanning coming in and saying, oh, well, we're, we're competing for wins. They're competing for clicks. Does anybody remember the state of Oregon football when we were kids? Oh, they were national championship contenders every year down there. They were. I remember when they upset Michigan with LeGarrette Blunt and all that. And then from that, they took off. They were just like. And, and, the, and, the and, how, and how did they get to that point? Uh, because they had the coolest jerseys and their facilities were better than everybody else's. They and they had Chip <laughs> Kelly, who was always in the news. Chip Kelly Phil was Knight, always in the news. Phil Knight put so much money into that program. I'm like, bro, like you got other so, teams that sponsored by Nike. What is you all right now? So, is competing for clicks not the way that Oregon got to be the powerhouse that they are? Hello. Their team, they got 30 different jerseys in rotation. They got the coolest uh, facilities. And I remember Oregon being the first team that was really putting themselves out there on social media back when, you know, early 2010s when social media really got popping. It was the ones putting out, yo, this is our new facility. Yo, these are our new jerseys. Look what we did to the field. Oregon got to where they were by competing for clicks. They were one of hey, the I'm, first teams I, to do uniform reveals every week. They had the uniform reveal videos every week. And, like, yep. high school players, I remember because I was in high school at the time, everybody was tuned in. Like, yep. bro, you got to go <laughs> see what they just put out. You got to go hey, see. Hey, listen, it. listen. I'm going to add a cherry on top. We know how terrible it is living in Oregon because Dane finally wants out of Oregon. And we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> so you know how terrible it is living in Oregon. So to choose to live in Oregon? And go to school for four or five mm-hmm. years. You uh, have to do something for clicks. And, 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 and one last and one last point. Um, does anybody know? I'm starting to turn for this. Does anybody know? Uh, sh- 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 I'm trying to make sure I got his name right. Um, do anybody know who Jer- Jeremiah Smith is? I have no clue. He is the uh, he is the the number one prospect. He's a wide receiver. He's the number one prospect. Mm-hmm. Um, for the class of 2024 high school. Do you know who we just had a visit with yesterday? Colorado. The University of Colorado. Mm. So this goes to show you that Coach Prime is doing exactly what he's supposed to do. This team is overachieving. And I, I think games like this, quotes like this, is going to do nothing but light a fire under Coach Prime. Because I'm telling y'all, in two, three years... Colorado is going to be competing for a championship. It's a million kids that want to go out there and play for Coach Prime. If, if I was a top tier talent, he gonna be I would for 12. sure want to go to Colorado. They're going to the Big Twelve, by the way. So the, I know the two pack is about to dissolve, which because it used to be the Pac twelve, but now it's just Oregon State, Washington State. So the two pack is about to dissolve. But yeah, yeah, all, um, all I'm saying, if if you were still playing college ball, if if you were still playing uh high school ball right now, you was a highly titled recruit in Colorado. You you had a list of ten teams that wanted you, and Colorado was one of them. Would you oh, not want to go play for Coach Prime? Y'all know y'all know my relationship with with Deion Sanders. I would be there in a heartbeat. That, that's exactly. Not even a thought that's not even like a uh like oh what what do we have to do here thing. I'm gonna say this. Deion Sanders is, for those of you who have seen Ant-Man or know um, Nordic lore, or is that Nordic? Slavic lore. This this man is the Baba Yaga of college football. <laughs> or for those of you who have seen John Wick as well, this man is the Baba Yaga of college football. Why do you say that, Ken? Well, here's why. Do y'all know how long Deion Sanders has been a coach at the college level, period? Coaching anything. Position coach coordinator, head coach. Y'all know how long he's been doing that at the college level? At the college level? Yes. This is what, third year? Yeah, year three. This is his fourth, fourth year. The COVID year was his first year. Right, I didn't count that year because that mean that wasn't written. So if we, okay, so if we don't count the COVID year, his first four years, his his first, he's three years in. Dan Lanning is talking like he just beat a national champion. (laughs) Yep. Colorado won. One game last year. Congratulations. Hey, look, if hey, you're look, watching you. this show, you have won 
as many games against FBS opponents as Colorado did last year. Congratulations. <laughs> and, get, and, get, and Vegas only had a win in three games this year. I and, and I said when I said coming into the season, by the way, if y'all watch uh, Locked On College Football Live every Monday, I mean every Friday, eleven a.m. to one p.m. If you watch Locked On College Football Live, I said this team has a ceiling of about six wins. They got about six, seven wins. I can see that. I am telling you right now, these coaches are terrified. They are shaking in their boots. They are staying up at night trying to find new ways to get a Dion because there's what we're seeing right now is insane. It's insanity. Yeah. We all knew that this team was going to be better than what the media picked it to be. We all knew that. But did, did, did you see the reports that it's a, a pool of players, a pool of coaches that got together to game plan for Colorado? Yeah. And, and including you know, I, Dan Lenning. I'm going to hope. I'm going to hope and pray that that's a lie. Because if that's the truth, that's the that's most embarrassing thing. Here, bro. That's, that's the most embarrassing thing. <laughs> I wouldn't even, if, if it came out that I was a part of that coaching, I would legit have to like hide my face in public for the next two, three years. <laughs> because I did all this for a coach who, do y'all know how long Deion Sanders has coached an FBS program? The FBS it, program? Yeah, an FBS program. What? Four games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is the first year. Four games, and y'all are sitting up here, bro. We gotta stop this guy, man. This is, <laughs> bro, listen, listen. Get your man's, get your man's, and we finna jump him. He don't know it, but we finna jump this man in the film room. After four games, bro, I'd be embarrassed. I would not want to tell nobody none of this. I would, I would be very quiet about that. I would, hey, that's that, I got another one. That's like with the wire. All them scared of Omar. All of them in the whole <laughs> dude scared of Omar. Omar, hey, Omar <laughs> one man. Omar, one man. When Dion say, when Dion say, I keep receipts. They hear Omar whistle. They hear, they hear <laughs> Benny the, they hear Benny the butcher hop on the track and say the butcher coming. They hear that every time they hear Dion. Because there's no reason for coaches to be this intent and this upset about every little thing that man does. It's it's something I've never seen before. I have never seen. You talk about this Saturday, Ole Miss played Alabama and Lane Kiffin took shots at Nick Saban all week. Well, it makes sense because Nick Saban is the top dog. He's been the champion's champion. He's won more championships than I got strands of hair on my head. You understand? That man is a absolute unit in terms of what he has developed at Alabama. He's been a head coach at LSU, won a national championship. He brought Michigan State to national prominence. He has done this thing for darn near three decades. I get it to be celebrating, I think I'm going to beat Nick. I understand that. Y'all are talking about a guy that's coached at the FBS level for a whole whopping four games. And y'all, yeah, we got him. <laughs> Look at that. And, and I'm going to leave it at this because we like to keep this show about sports. But, oh, girl who said Coach Dan Lanning took a stand for all of us. Babes, you graduated from USC. Who's us? Say it. <laughs> say it out loud. Don't say, don't say the hard ER in broad daylight without saying the hard ER in broad daylight. Say what you got to say. In the words of John Mayer, who, was, who also is on that same train, say what you need to say. <laughs> say what you need to say. Okay? Talk to him. Just say it. Say it out loud. And, and that's all I'm going to say on that. That's all I'm going to say on that. But like like Dion said, you better get him now. Because Colorado really is. They on the way. Yep. They on the way. And, again, if y'all talking like this right now, we it's, it's going to get it's gonna get real intense coming up pretty soon here. But let's jump back from the college level to the NFL level and looking at week three, who are some of your top performers, some of your worst performers, and some of the storylines that you really, you just got to speak on it right now. Talk to me. Um, So for my top performers, um, one, I'm starting off with a few quarterbacks that Honestly, I I'll be on the fence about him. Uh, you know, we we usually not try not to bring this into the podcast that often, but I always root for a black quarterback whenever I see him out there. And it's a couple that's in the league right now. We've had an influx of black quarterbacks, and I was on the fence about a handful of them, I'll be honest. But yeah. Jordan Love. I'm giving some love to Jordan Love this episode. Jordan Love was down 17 nothing. I know we supposed to hate Green Bay. Jordan Love was down 17 nothing. They came back 118 nothing, and he was missing three of his biggest weapons. 
Hey, snatch this man Lions fan card, bro. Don't let him in the forward field. Treat him like y'all it's, used to treat those still, people that had the fire McMillan sign. It's still, F Green, it's still F Green Bay forever. But Jordan Love went out there and impressed me. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm starting with that. <clears throat> also, um, on the other side of things, I, I actually, um, I'm going to go ahead. It was, it was a game between these two teams. One team had to win. But two teams that's both on the downturn for me, I'm looking at Minnesota and Los Angeles. Oof. If you're Los Angeles, you're going into this team with enough weapons to where a lot of people, the yeah, yeah, the, 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 the Chargers, the a lot of people are considering you a favorite to contend for the Super Bowl. If you look at, you know, the favorites to win the Super Bowl, I think the Chargers were fourth in, in the Vegas eyes before the season started. Chris would be the man to know that. But I believe the order went uh, Kansas City, Philadelphia, Buffalo, and then the, the Chargers. They and was tied for fourth, but yeah. Oh, it, and, and, and this is a team to where Justin Herbert has is, is looked impressive, but at the same time, those other pieces that are around him are not performing. This is a team that got I into mean, an absolute. Only... Go ahead. Go ahead. This is a team that just got into an absolute dogfight with Minnesota, who is, you know, if the, the Broncos didn't just lose by 50, I think you could be looking at Minnesota as the worst team in the NFL throughout these first three weeks. Yeesh. Yeesh. Hey, this Hate it for him. Josh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you about a lot of your points there. I mean, Jordan Love, I was watching the Saints game with some friends, and um, when when uh, when the Saints missed that field goal, my friends were like, oh, man, well, looks like the Saints got to get one more stand in them. I said, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> I've seen this story play out with the Green Bay Packers. It's a tale as old as time. I have seen this story again and again and again. Jordan Love is going to drive down the field and win this football game. Oh, no, Ken, when you were growing up, it was it was uh, Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Don't worry. Don't matter the quarterback. If they got that little G on their hel- ye- yellow little helmet, they're going to do what they do. It's going to happen <laughs> every time. And and also, and- shout out to C.J. Stroud. He, he's been – yeah, looking yeah. very good for the team. They only won it two, but he's been doing what he's supposed to do at quarterback. You know what? He, I was just about to say that's a team that is surprising because they're not even supposed to be competing for real. And yeah. here he is, got them boys right in the thick of every game, pretty much. Man. But yeah, that's that's Josh. You're right. You're right in giving your love to to uh, to love there. Chris, talk to me. What are the storylines? Who's your top performance? Who's your worst performance? Talk to me. I know he didn't play last week, but I'm surprised y'all didn't bring this guy up. Anthony Richardson is surprisingly good. Like, this brother can play. This yeah. brother can play. Yeah. I was extremely shocked. He had flashes of Lamar. He had the stuff we liked about Justin Fields last year. And he got an arm. Like, I was really shocked at that last week. Anthony Richardson, to me, could he is what we... Well, it's early. Let me not jump the bandwagon. But he is, to me, what they thought Carson Wentz was going to be. To me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that's who the coach thought they was getting when they brought over Carson. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the team that's actually surprised me the most, and I know they ain't been fully healthy and they didn't play a lot last year, but the Ravens. I'm gonna be honest, the Ravens. To me, they they two and one, but it ain't a clean two and one. It ain't, it's a nasty two and one. Like it's Very. an ugly two and one. Like I. I was just going against the grain because I you see you see I rock with the Steelers. I was going against the grain. I couldn't pick the Ravens, so I picked the Browns. But with that Browns defense and Deshaun Watson still ain't got his stride back yet. But with Chris, that Browns playing. defense, Chris, stop. And the Ravens playing like that, <laughs> I think it's I think it's a, I think it's a possibility. Yes, Chris, don't make me knock over my computer. I just got a new camera. I just I I got the double the double ring light set up now. Don't make me knock all this over. Stop yeah, like I'm just keeping it a book. The Ravens didn't. They have not impressed me yet with all the, the moves they made. In the words of the man that's about to perform at the next Super Bowl, quit playing. Then stop that. <laughs> be for real. Stop playing. Cause you you not you not mm. serious right now. You not serious. The Browns no, 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 ain't no, look no. good. No no no. The Browns no, no, no. ain't look the good. Bro- I, I, I'm, 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 look look. I know the Browns ain't look good either. But what I'm saying is. 
it ain't surefire that the Ravens going to really, you know, this is this is the Ravens' year to get out that division and go meet up with the Chiefs, not the Bengals. Yeah, this is the Ravens' year. Like, if the Ravens don't yeah. do it this year, they need to go figure out what they're about to go get for Lamar. That's what they need to do. Well, I, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. They need to figure out what they're going to get for every offensive piece not named Lamar because I don't understand why nobody over there can catch the damn ball. I'm looking at you, Isaiah Likely. <laughs> The game was won, brother. All you had to do was catch that ball, make a make a catch that an NFL player making millions of dollars is supposed yep. to make, and we're good. You're good. I digress. I I want to. You know what? Since we're talking about tight ends, free the guys, free the guys. That's what I got to tell y'all. That's what I got to say here today. Free them. There are multiple guys that need to be freed in terms of uh, what I'm looking at for for the uh, NFL season this year. By the way, I, can y'all still hear me? It, it sounds like I cut out a little bit. No, it sounds right. good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, listen, Kyle Pitts needs to be freed. Justin Jefferson needs to be freed. Free the guys till it's backwards. I don't think we lost Chris, though. Oh, okay. So that's probably what I, I, it yep. might have been. I heard Chris in my ear. But free the guys, man. Free the guys. Let me get you with some stats real quick, okay? Kyle Pitts on the season now, on the season as a whole, has nine catches for 100 yards and no touchdowns. Kyle Pitts, third-year tight end, drafted top five, 6'6", 247. Runs a four, uh, I want to say yeah. high 4'3", four, low 4'4", four, four, somewhere in there. And that's what they got him at. Let's talk about Sam Laporta of the Detroit Lions. Not as tall, only 6'3", not as fast. Ran, I want to say mid-4'5", five, mid somewhere in there. That, that, that's all offensive coordinator right there. That man has 186 yards and a touchdown already this season. For those of you who don't know, he has exactly now one-third as many touchdowns as Kyle Pitts has on his career. <laughs> and Kyle Pitts has been in the NFL for three years now. What are we doing, man? Wait, that, that's, that's for his career? Kyle Pitts for his career has three touchdowns. Yes. I thought you were talking about this season. No, this season he doesn't have any. This season he doesn't have any. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Kyle Pitts is he has been that they have held that man down. They have I don't understand it. I tr- really and truly don't understand how they've done Kyle Pitts the way they've done him. That boy is an animal. He's he's something different. And for whatever reason, it's like, mm. We're good. We don't really feel like passing him the ball. It's it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, and so with that being said, um, free him. And also free Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson is on the all yeah, for, team right now. Free, free Justin Jefferson for sure. Potentially the best wide receiver in all of football. Best pass catcher in all of football is on the team that's 0-3 right now. Free the guys, man. Free him. Free him. Free him till it's backwards. Free him till it's backwards. Because this here is hideous. This here is nasty. This is, you know, very disappointing to say the least. Um, and and when I look at this situation for both of these guys, I'm saying to myself, okay, at least with Kyle Pitts, you can kind of say, well, they don't have their quarterback yet, and they're going to get their guy next year and all that good stuff. And he suffered through some injuries, whatever the case may be. Sure. But in terms of, of looking around at everything else, what under God's green earth got y'all going 0-3 with Justin Jefferson? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Free the guys. <laughs> that Free reason him. is called Kirk Cousins. Free him. Free the guys. Free the guys. <laughs> Chris, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Make sure you're on in the, in the clean feed. But uh, yeah, it, says, it, says, it says you're muted in the clean feed. If you can hear us, it says you're muted. Yeah, yeah. Free- I was about to Free say guy. Derek Carr can't get out of this. Can't get out of this either. Derek Carr can't get out of this. Oh, don't worry. Only... Don't worry. There's there's more. There's more. That was just my. That was just the first thing that I thought of. Second thing, the folks who keep saying the Lions shouldn't have traded DeAndre Swift. Do y'all not see the holes that that boy is running through? That offensive line is parting the Red Sea. Remember when we asked <laughs> yeah. if the average person could get ten yards in the NFL game? I swear to you all, if the holes are like that, yes, we could all do it. We could all do And I'm, of course, recusing myself from that because I played football in college. I'm not the average human being. 
Like, at the end of the day, you got 300 pounds running downhill with the ball. That's a different situation than most people, sure. But I'm telling you, if you look at those holes that they bust open for that young man, anybody could run through that. Anybody. Mm -hmm. Them holes more open than after 2 a.m. Hey, what, Chris? <laughs> this is a PG show. Now. This is a PG show. Don't, don't get us canceled. Don't get us. But very seriously, Josh Nieces could run through the hole if you give him the ball, and that's the situation. Now, now would they fumble upon the contact? Of course. But they give you five yards for carry. They're going to give you that. Hey, they're going to get you half a first down if they not be in touch for a good five, six yards. Hey, come on, man. Come on. And lastly, quarterbacks underperforming. Folks, stop paying these quarterbacks. Stop it. Stop it. What are y'all doing? You pay these quarterbacks so much, you can't take care of nothing else on the team, and now all of a sudden your quarterback is not doing nothing crazy to take your team where they need to be. I got one Come on. better for you, Gibbs. You paid your quarterback, now you can't pay your running back, and now you, they only know you're going to throw the football. <clears throat> looking, so at one, film. looking at one Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. Looking at one, uh, Mr. Carr, Mr. Derek Carr. Looking, looking at multiple cute. Looking at one, Kirk Cousins. Looking at the Colts right now, who still got JT on the tag. The and and he's not gonna play for that reason. Looking at the Browns with Deshaun Watson. <clears throat> Hello, stop paying these quarterbacks yeah. all this money, man. Stop paying all this these quarterbacks all this money to where you can't do nothing with nobody else. You ain't got no help. Form. You can't get them no help. There are a That's few a sad quarterbacks. Part about the Broncos, they paid everybody. They paid yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. There are a few quarterbacks that's like they're that good to where whatever team you put them on, they'll backpack them to nine wins, eight nine wins, regardless of what's going on. There are very few. I think you got Mahomes in that category. I think you got um, Lamar in that category. I think you got Aaron Rodgers when he's healthy in that category. I think you got. That might be it. I think that's just about yeah. It. I, I would I would say in the regular maybe season, Justin Herbert, Josh Allen. maybe Justin, Justin Herbert. No, 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 I don't think Josh Herbert. Allen. I don't no, think Josh no, Allen backpacks that team to wins. I'm sorry, their defense has no. been phenomenal. Yeah, that they, defense has been phenomenal. If that defense was man, I don't think that Josh Allen has the success that he has. If he doesn't have Diggs, if you pay him so much that you can't pay Diggs, he's not. That offense just ain't. ain't I, really I'm not good. sold on Justin Herbert, bro. I'm just not. I agree. I agree. Listen, I said maybe Justin Herbert. I'm not. I think Josh Allen and him are in that. Like we play a spades. You got three and two possible. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not gonna say that they in, but I'm gonna say they on the break. They knocking on the door. Like, oh, Jalen Hurts. What you think, Jalen Hurts? I don't think Jalen Hurts is in that category. I don't think he's in that. Pay him so much that you might not be able to pay nobody else category. I think Jalen Hurts. I don't. I'm not gonna say he's a system quarterback because I think that's disrespectful. However, he has benefited from greatness around him in a way that, like, I don't think that I can give a true assessment of can he backpack a team or not. Because everybody else that I mentioned, we've seen them lead teams that are like, bro, if he gets hurt, this team is dog water. Like, this is not a good team without yeah, bro. You know what I mean? Chiefs lost Mahomes, bro. Oh. Think about it, right? That is such a mid team outside of Mahomes and Kelsey. Like, that team, no. like. If somebody could name me the wide receiver four for the Chiefs right now, I might give you some money. I got Kadarius Tony, Marquez Valdez he's three, Scanley, he's three. Sky Moore, and uh that's it. That's all I got. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I, I can't I can't give you one. I don't know if Pringle is still on the team. Four players on the Chiefs defense right now. Well, that's that's not fair. I know, we, I know we football know. guys. Yeah, we football right, guys. Right, right. So we we, we, we can people, name them. Most people not popping up. Wild Thornhill, baby. <laughs> that was a killer. He's a killer out there. Kalaftis? Kalaftis off the I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hold you. I would probably struggle a little bit, though. Yikes. You, you, got, you got Chris Jones. You got Nick Bolton. Uh, you got Sneed. Uh-huh. I just said one of the names that you didn't think of yet. You got Justin Reed. You got a uh, what's the what's there the you go. there you go tra 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 tranquil. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. tranquil the Mike linebacker. Yeah. What's the one dude on the line? Oh yeah, Carl Loftus. That's about all I got for you. But but that's but that's our point. That's yeah, that's our point. That's our point. Again, I'm I'm stop paying these quarterbacks this much money, please. I don't care if a quarterback want to walk because you're not giving them the world. Good. 
We have seen teams who have a decent quarterback and a good team surrounding him have success so far this season. That's what we have seen. If we look around the league and we look at the team, and I know it's early. I'm not saying that the season is ending and over by any means. But if we look around at the NFL standings right now, you tell me in terms of all of these top teams, if their quarterback is like that or if they've surrounded a decent quarterback with just an outstanding talent. Right. The only undefeated team in the AFC is the Dolphins. Is their quarterback like that? or did, Chris, Tua stop playing. Tua, Tua not like that, but – it's early for Tua, though. It's early. I, I, I like I like Tua a lot. He a good quarterback. He not like it's that. Early though. Is it not early yet? He not, not like saying, that. We're not saying, Chris, we're not saying, no, like, no, no. is I'm he saying, good or not? We're saying, like, is he that good to where you're like, I will pay him and bankrupt the team. Oh, I, no, I don't no, care. No. If he got I, I, I can name you 10 other quarterbacks right now that if they had them weapons that Tua had, they'd also be 3-0. The 49ers, also 3-0. Brock Purdy's their quarterback. I, you would know they not. 49ers they got can't. the best roster in the NFL. That's my point. Stop yeah. playing. Stop <laughs> playing around. Giving these quarterbacks, hey, you want 50 million a year, we'll give it to you. You want 60 million a year, we'll give it to you. Listen, and trust me, I'm never on the side of the owners. I'm never on the side of the owners. I'm not saying that the owners should keep this money to themselves and be like, ah, we ain't paying nobody. Ha, ha, ha. No, stop paying these quarterbacks crazy. Pay the Saquon Barkleys of the world. Pay the Jonathan Taylors of the world. Pay the Bernard Pier Well, not he's not what he used to be. But pay the guy like Calais Campbell what he was at of his problem. Pay him crazy money. And, That's and, who should be making crazy money. I, I Kevin like Byer, yeah. pay him crazy money. Like Don't pay these quarterbacks. Ryan Tannehill shouldn't be making crazy money. He just shouldn't be. <laughs> Bro, and, and we got to normalize that. Man. We got to normalize that because if you think about it, right, the goal of football is to win a Super Bowl, right? Yeah. And if you think about it from a strategic standpoint, right, if you have a guy that is not in the conversation of an undisputed Hall of Fame caliber, what does that mean, right? That means that, and I'll break it down to a smaller term too, that means that it takes a village, right? Yeah. And if that village and foundation isn't set correctly, then you're going to not hit the goal of winning the Super Bowl. I think a lot of GMs, they miss lose sight of that Super Bowl. I got to keep this person, keep them happy to sell tickets. And at yep. the end of the day, the way you sell tickets is by winning football games. Yeah. 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 And I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a leave it at this. Um, again, these quarterbacks, I understand that the era of Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and uh, Ben Roethlisberger got a lot of folks thinking like, because it was a time where literally they were in every Super Bowl for, I want to say, like 15 years, except like one or two. It was one of those three quarterbacks. It represented the AFC in every Super Bowl, except one or two over a very. Yeah, the, the, those quarterbacks were the the, the Tim Duck and D-Wade like Cole. Yes. Yeah. Those are the quarterbacks. <laughs> they, 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 they got 11, 11 visits all together, don't they? Yeah, or, but that's what I'm they saying. Got 13, 13 all together. My, my point is, those guys are the three that we're talking about right now in terms of a Lamar, in terms of a Pat, uh, a Pat Mahomes, in terms of an Aaron Rodgers, where it's like, okay, those are guys, sure, if you got to bankrupt the team, bankrupt the team. Everybody else, stop it. Stop it, man. Stop it. You should not be paying these quarterbacks crazy money because you got a better shot of getting there. And then when you get there, who knows what could happen? Who knows? Yeah, you sure you got Mahomes on the other side. And sure, even if he hurt his ankle, he gonna go in that locker room, get him a perk sixty, and come out and start balling <laughs> on y'all. Absolutely. But but what if there's a chance that Travis Kelsey goes down in the Super Bowl? Now look, now look at you. Now you're playing the team where Kadarius Tony is their best pass catcher. And I'm gonna tell you what, that boy got more drops than speaker knockers in 08. So <laughs> you know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You got a shot. You got a shot just because you got in the room. You got in the room. What they say on <laughs> Hamilton, I want to be in the room where it happens. Just get there and then make some make some shake from there. Fellas, we're going to end this thing out talking about, because we talked about quarterbacks and all that and how they can affect your team, but now we're going to talk about teams that either need to reload, meaning all you got to do is reshuffle some things and move some things around and we'll be all right. We'll, we'll figure it out. It's early in the season. Or rebuild, meaning strip this thing down to the studs. Fire sale, trade everything, get it, get rid of it all, and we'll figure it out on the back end. Y'all ready? Ready for it. All right. Well, let's start it off with the mighty, mighty Minnesota Vikings. Reload, 
or rebuild? Rebuild. Mm. I think they mm. just need to reload, bro. I think they two pieces away from being back an upper echelon team, bro. Mm -hmm. Hashtag justice I'll for Justin. Justice for Justin. Justice. For I Justin. agree, but if you get rid of Kirk up out of there, they have a decent O line. They had they had a decent running back, got older, but they running back still not terrible right now. I'm, I think you, you you add them and another defensive piece, and they all right. Here's where I am with this thing. I'm reload tentatively, T very tentatively. I'm very much so like, this is not 100% reload. Like, I'm like 58% re I'm not even 58. I'm like 52% reload, 48% rebuild. If they can't get this thing together by week six, because here's a fun fact about the Vikings. Each and every one of their losses this year have all come by one possession. Like, yeah. as unfortunate as it is, they're in these ball games. They just cannot finish. I mean, what are we doing here? Like, if they can just literally close out a ball game, they'll be just fine. They'll be because they're in they're in position to do so. It's just every time something unfortunate happens. So, with that being said, I'll say reload. But if they don't get it together by week seven. Trade everything, including Justin oh, Jefferson. Oh, yeah. They don't get it together about that deadline. I say trade Justin, Justin Jefferson. And let me tell you, somebody was talking to me earlier like, trade Justin Jefferson. You're insane. You're out of your mind. Da, 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 da. I said, listen, if you really think about this, if who do they have as really big assets to, to make anything happen? Who? Don't. Who? You got to get something way valuable. And everybody keeps talking about, oh, send, send Kirk Cousins to the Jets. What are the Jets going to give them? Aaron Rodgers? And what else? They could maybe trade that straight up, but then that means that you're giving away this year, and then you're hoping that Aaron Rodgers, while he's on his uh, Brett Favre tour of going from the, the Packers to the Jets to the Vikings, you're then hoping that he comes back healthy and is somewhat near the guy that he used to be, and on top of those things, you're hoping that um, you're hoping that Justin Jefferson stays healthy as well. And you're hoping that a defense that's pretty old is somehow going to get better out the blue. Good for you. More power to you, babes, if that's what you believe. I mean, <laughs> you know, more power to you. I'll say reload up until about week six or seven. If they still haven't figured it out, if they're one and five, two and three. And here's their upcoming games, by the way. And this is why I say by week six, if y'all haven't figured this out and gotten somewhere near a decent record. They have the Panthers next, the Chiefs after that, the Bears after that. If y'all don't pull out that Panthers and Bears game, get everybody out. Get everybody out. It's time. If y'all yeah. lose either one of those games, yeah, it's time. It's time. Go ahead. Pack it on up. The next team in rebuild or reload. Fellas, talk to me. We have the Chargers. Rebuild or reload? Reload. Um, that window is very close. is is very small for reload. You have this season to make some trades or add some pieces or try to get you an explosive player out of this next draft, get you some free agents of maybe some age and veteran players that still got a little bit left in the tank because you have a pretty aged roster here outside of Justin uh, Herbert. And you need to go ahead and try to squeeze one ring out of that roster before them boys out of there. You're looking at a similar situation outside of the quarterback position that we saw with the Rams. Uh, Two seasons ago. Yeah, yeah. Thousand percent agree. Thousand percent agree. Chris, rebuild or reload for the Chargers? I think they might get Vikings treatment, bro. Because mm. Keenan Allen, about how old you got yeah. a lot of old guys on that line. Mike Williams just tore his ACL. Yep. You know? I, I think you got to the deadline to figure it out. If it's still ugly and you're not turning that needle. Because think about it. What success have they really had? That's fair. That's fair. That's very fair. I'm going to say this. I say reload, but you need a new head coach. Staley has done multiple things as a head coach that they're, they're not fireable offenses. They're indefensibly fireable offenses. They're fireable <laughs> offenses that are so bad. You they can't jump in and say like, oh, this made sense because... It was about three minutes left in the game, and they went for it on fourth yeah. down yeah. on their own 23. Yeah. If the Vikings had anybody under center besides Kirk Cousins, the Chargers are losing that game. Yeah. And again, I, this is not fireable. 
That's indefensibly foul. <laughs> like, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know the old saying, right? Water attracts water. Oil attracts oil. Like things come together. If y'all are part of football Twitter, you see, like when they talk about Jawan Taylor and the false starts and the legal alignment thing, all these offensive linemen rallied around him and start lying and gaslighting everybody together. They all came together and said, oh, no, what he's doing is legal. It's fine. Everybody does it. It's not a bad thing. When you see quarterbacks have terrible games, the, the quarterback fraternity comes together, they wrap their arms around them. Oh, no, Justin Fields will be just fine. It's the play calling. It's the organization. He'll be okay. Like, we, they'll, they'll be all right, you know. I have not seen a single former head coach come to this man's defense and be like, yo, Staley <laughs> is doing a good job. He's doing a good job. He just, it's just the player. Everybody's looking at him saying, yeah, they should be winning football games. I don't know what they're yep. I don't know what's going on with him. So, you know, that's just my thought there. Um, they need to reload just with a different head coach. So if that makes it a rebuild, then I guess it's real. But they need to reload with a different head coach. I don't care what nobody say. I think anybody else's head coach, they'll be just fine. But with him back there, yeah, you're cooked. You're cooked. Next, speaking of head coaches, longest tenure head coach in the NFL, most decorated coach in NFL history, the guy who has more Lombardis than Vince Lombardi, Bill Belichick and the Patriots rebuild and reload, fellas. Talk to me. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to rebuild. Mm. The Patriots don't have a bad roster. They had. They have a hell of a coach in Bill Belichick. But at the same time, this current. Well, when I look at when I look at um, NFL teams to decide whether or not they should rebuild, I look at those skill positions, those important positions, quarterback. I look at the, the secondary because there's a lot of positions in there that are uh, I, I don't want to say replaceable, but you can you can find replacements for it. Yeah, yeah. The Patriots don't shine at any of those positions to where in the next you know two to three seasons. I say that's the window for every NFL team to figure out if they're going to get it done. They don't have anybody at those positions where I'm like, yo, these are spots that are going to lead them to a Super Bowl victory within these next two, three years, or even get them remotely close. Zeke Elliott don't move the needle for you? <laughs> Zeke Elliott ain't doing it? <laughs> Zeke, the le- almost the least of my concerns, but no, he doesn't get it done whatsoever. That man rushed at 25 yards last game. He is a big concern to me. <laughs> Very concerned. Extremely concerned. Chris, I know you just left, so you can talk freely now. You know what I mean? You are not under surveillance no more, brother. Tell us. The Patriots in rebuild or reload mode? Which one do you got to do? Two things working in their favor. I'm going to be honest with you. Two things working in their favor, right? You're in Boston area. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing, right? What that means is People are going to want to play for the Patriots because of that name and that. Right. So you still can land free agents. It's not going to be the right, maybe, complexion they want, but <laughs> they can still, they can still <laughs> land free agents. The right. second thing is, if you look at their division, without yeah. that bad man, where do you see them at? Boy, that thing wide open. That division is wide open. I'm yeah. just saying... The Dolphins got us all drooling at the mouth, salivating like, oh, my God. But two will go down. They one quarterback hit away from being a very hey, different listen, situation. Yeah. Two have a concussion problem again. Yeah. You be looking at the vision like, uh, the Bills, we beat them only throwing the ball three times last year. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to reload. I'm going to reload. I'm going to reload. I'm going to tell you this. This is a team that, I hate to say it, I think football has passed Bill Belichick by. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. And I know people are going to look at me crazy, and they're going to say, hey, Ken, you're out of your mind. All the championships, all the things he's done. Here's the problem. This is a team that he's the GM, basically, right? Everybody agrees that he calls the shots around there and all that good stuff. Yep. Everybody keeps saying, well, when Bill Belichick gets better players, he's picking the players. <laughs> it's him. <laughs> if, he won't, if he won't at least relinquish the reins in that way, this is what you're going to continue to get. This, this is the result. So, to me, they either need to reshuffle the front office and say, listen, Bill, 
We trust you to do the X and O's. Give us the archetype of the player you want, and we'll go get them. But leave it to us to actually go pick the players. Because lately, brother, you've been a little off. You've been a little looking shaky, baby. You're looking shaky. And also, that's an offense that hasn't produced 21 points one time this season. Even in beating the Jets, 15 to 10. You want to know who their offensive coordinator is? Don't know. Take a, take a wild guess. Take a wild guess. It, he's relevant to the Lions. Oh, um, is it my? What's his name? Um, well, actually, is 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 Bill O'Brien now? But but well, it was our he, old head coach, right? He had Pat. He had Matt Patricia. That's his, his name. Coach. Yeah, that is the type of stuff that I'm talking about. It's only defensible because you're Bill Belichick. In no other world could you tell anybody, hey, yeah, Matt Patricia is your offensive coordinator. And people are like, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good coach. <laughs> that's a good coach. It makes it. Come on. Come on, man. Stop playing. Stop playing. So that's that's where we're going to go there. Now, we're moving on, and we're going to close it out real quick with these last couple. In terms of the Chicago Bears, rebuild or reload? And specifically, Chicago Bears with Justin Fields. Rebuild, reload. What we got going on? Oh, that's an easy rebuild. I'm going to go reload. If we're talking in terms of Justin Fields, I'm going to go reload. You have to give him a fair chance to see what he can do with a decent offensive line with some decent weapons, with something. You're talking about somebody who, like, if you're talking to the casual fan, you can't give me one of the players on the, on the, on the Bears roster besides Justin Fields. You got to give him a chance to get something done with, uh, you know, some some decent NFL players that he can throw the ball to. For sure. For sure. Chris, what you got? I think if Justin Fields and Russell Wilson switch places, I think that it would be a one-to-one right now. Honestly, it would be a one-to-one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't send Justin Fields over there to that. Don't send that brother I'm over there. I'm saying that's how bad it is. Like, the team Ooh. is that bad. They need to rebuild all of it. They need to rebuild that whole team. And if you look at that roster, when has he when has he put had a roster that made you like, ooh, it's it's scary over there. They on paper they have one of the most well balanced team, but they have no specialists at all. Yeah. They don't have one specialist yeah. on that team. I'ma say this. In the words of Roger Davis, say it two times. Justice <laughs> for Justin. Because I'm gonna say it twice. Justice for Justin Jefferson, justice for Justin Fields. I'm going to say it two times. Rebuild. Send Justin somewhere where he can win. Send Justin somewhere where that team actually can do something and build around them. And I'm going to tell you, I was just about to say, if we're talking about teams where they're talking about, oh, we need a quarterback and we need somebody who can win right now. Hey, that call. I, what what yeah. is it? Call him yeah. up right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Call them, man. They're or Minnesota. They need to call. Listen, that somebody needs to put in that call because Justin Value is low right now. You can probably get him for cheap compared to the player that he actually is because the Chicago Bears, who have – we talked about this before we got on there, but the three best quarterbacks in Bears history, we would probably say are McMahon, Cutler, and – Grossman. Lewis Grossman. Like, Grossman made a Super Bowl. That's ter- and guess what? The only other answer would be somebody who played back with Sid Luckman or something like that. Like that's <laughs> helmets were soft last time the Bears had a good court. There's a reason. There's a reason. Mm-hmm. There sure is. So with that being said, rebuild. Get Justin out of there. Get him gone, man. Get him gone. That brother needs to be somewhere where he can get get something done. I know y'all tired of us talking about these quarterbacks underperforming and overpaid. But come on back next week and the week after that and the week after that. Peace and love, y'all.